Justin? Yes, sir. Yeah, Kyle Hoyle. Bags here, one of, uh, one of many seniors that are, that are going to be honored. Recording in progress. I'm, I'm not. You're not? You're not I'm coming playing. back. You are? Okay. Yeah. You're going to play with your brother? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not leaving. Oh. Well, okay. As of right now. Okay. So, uh, well, so for the other seniors, there's going to be more than 20 of them. Yeah. What, what is that group meant to this program and how excited are you to, to play for those guys? Um, it means a lot. Um, and that could be that could very well be me out there this year if it wasn't due to COVID through that year. But um it means a lot. There's been a lot of time and effort put in by these men and I want to send them out the right way. Um, so it's important to me to get this have a good have a good game and get us on the right track this week. Uh, and get them, let them seniors go out on a on a good good taste in the mouth in lane. So what have you noticed from, from Keyshawn over the last few years? He, he's obviously with Mm-hmm. But what, what have you noticed from Keyshawn? He's been he's done he's been doing well. He's a very he's he has good instincts. Um, he's good at finding his way to the ball. I'd say, and he's he's a, he's, he's a smart guy, and he's worked his way to have, being able to play. And he's uh he's come up big. He came up big a lot of uh, last week in some in some uh, situations. So I'm proud of him. He's gonna keep, he's gonna keep getting better, and um yeah he's gonna he's gonna have a big role this week as well. Josh was in here, and I, I asked him. Specifically, in terms of stopping the run, what you guys need to do better. And Fuga. He, yeah. He, okay. And he said fun, fundamental, really tackling. What, what do you think? There's, there's more to, to that, or what, what specifically? What kind of details do you guys need to, to shore up? I guess to, to be more efficient stopping the run, especially with a, a pretty solid Duke running game coming. Today. Um, we gotta. We definitely have to tackle a lot better, but scrape tighter, not. Right, linebacker position. We we had this. We had a problem about a couple weeks ago. We felt like we sort of fixed it. Um, just really scraping tighter um, when the ball bounces. Um, don't letting not letting edges be as soft for so that when the DBs come down, it's, it's, it's an easier to tackle for them. Sort of padding back into tight ends, not letting them wash you down. Um, like I said, that makes it a lot harder for a DB to t- make a tackle in space. And um, really trusting our training. Um, this level, you can't go out there and just put throw a shoulder into people. Yeah, I know we were a lot. We were really we were very frustrated last week, um, but at that point, you need to really trust in your fundamentals more instead of saying throwing out the window. You can't have that, and it obviously showed. Um, should have been off the field many a times. Then we just got frustrated and didn't trust our technique and didn't live up to the standard. Is that something that Jay Ham has, has reiterated to you guys? Um, I mean, he he said that Sunday, like, but I mean, over the year, yeah. But like, that's really what I see is like, I've noticed like when when it, when it's all said and done, when you're out there in the game, you're really going to go back to your core fundamentals, core principles, what you b- truly believe in, and what you do on a day to day basis. If you hop around and you don't get in a good stance in practice, you're not going to do it in the game. And you're gonna, if you don't, if you don't run the ball, you don't take good angles in practice. You're not gonna do it in the game. If you don't do all the little things, like I've been saying over and over again each week, you're not gonna do it in the game. And so, you have to lock in and focus on those things so you can do those things in a game. In my opinion. What, what did you notice from Duke on film, particularly Durant at running back? They run. They run the ball. Um, they're. Their left guard, one of the guards, he's a, he's a dog. He's he, he's coming out to, he comes to, he comes to play each each week. Um, number twenty one run, runs downhill. Um, they're not going to throw the ball if they don't have to. So we're going to stop the run, and it's got to get back to plan how we were at the beginning of the year. Really, a lot of confidence and getting downhill and making plays, um, playing fast, not really thinking. We got to needs to be. We need, it needs to be more reaction instead of think a little bit and react. You, we got to play fast, and that really, hopefully, we get back to that this week. So, yeah. Jack, you know, or Jack, you know it's been a tough year with you know, yeah. the rolling record and pro eligibility is uh, still obtainable. So, what's yeah. the message in the locker room? How do you guys think you'll um, Really, what I've been thinking about is like, 
this game is pretty it, it correlates to life pretty well. Um, Jaham talks about it a lot, but when you have a wife and kids, when you have a family, and times get tough, are you going to quit on them? And a lot of people do. And a lot of people in life, when things get tough, they just walk around their family. And you can do the same thing with this team. You can walk out on us. But really, this really shows what kind of man you are and what kind of person you, you want to be, in my opinion, if you go back to work, regardless of outcome, on Friday. And and that's really where I'm at right now is you just got to come back to work each day and just give it your best, uh, regardless of outcome. And it's going to correlate to life. I just truly believe this is setting me up for some, setting us all up for something, for more. I would. Uh, we're not. We're not going through this just to go through it. I think it's setting up, setting, setting something in our future is going to, it's going to help us. So, sure. very excited. You guys have been pretty good defensively. You talk about Jay Ham and how he's you know, been able to keep you guys uh, together and play pretty mm -hmm. well. Um, we bend, but we don't break. Um, that's really where. We had a lot of long drives in BC. Some now said so there was maybe some maybe there was some fluke plays, but we bended. We might have given up some yards, but when it comes down to it, I think I said last week, red zone defense is really all that matters. Um, you can bend, but you just don't break. You just don't let them in the end zone, and and that gives yourself a, sh a chance to win. And so we just got to do that each week, and that's really all that matters. So, yes, sir. All right, Wes McElroy from our uh, radio team wanted me to ask you if you've read the book The Cornell Effect yet. I read I read a couple. Uh, low, the first chapter is really good. Um, Nick Gallo read it. He's very impressed, but Cornell's my guy. Right, so talk about your relationship with uh, Cornell and just how that's developed over the past uh, year or so. Um, I've seen him on the sidelines the past year or two, but I've used uh, his father, John. He's I've seen him on Twitter, Instagram, through social media. Um, it's been pretty cool, that connection. And just really, really his story, I mean, it's amazing. Um, just there's very, very few people in the world, like John and his wife, um, and those people make a difference in the world. That, that's a little, little shining, a little bit of light in this dark world, and I'm very happy to call them my friend and just to have met and let Cornell be in my life. It's, it's changed me. It's been an amazing opportunity. I'm very happy for him to be, on, be a Hokie this year and hopefully in years to come.